bits of Doric classical columns which... They're Corinthian, you bloody Philistine. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, another episode of Gentry in a Jiffy, if you're not used to this uh, segment, is basically where I try, well, attempt to make more concise videos answering your questions, but I have a feeling this one might be a long one as there's a lot to talk about. Uh, I'll do a quick wristwatch check before I get into it. I'm wearing something classic, simple, affordable, one of my favorite Casios. Let's see if I can remember the uh, reference number. It's the A1. 58W, I hope. If you want to leave a question for a future episode, please do uh, share in the comments below, or you can email in theurbangentry at gmail.com, all one word. Today we have an email in from Carlos in San Diego, never been, California of course, dying to go, I've heard great things. And he says, Dear TGV, I am a big fan and have followed you since the days you made more videos about cultural subjects uh, more than just watches, fantastic. So we have a true OG, original gentry there. I do miss those days. I find your attitude infectious and I admire how you always remain positive even when dealing with uh, your many battles with health. Well, thank you very much. Personally, I have found the watch community very toxic and I have received many hateful comments on my Instagram posts because I do not have luxury watches. My question is, how do I deal with all the negative criticism online? Wow, well, that is a really good question. In fact, I think it, it goes more into just life advice and how you look at life. So first of all, remember this quote from Win Winston Churchill, you will never get to your destination if you stop to throw stones at every dog that barks. It's really simple common sense, but very true life advice. Carlos, you gotta remember that the snob, let, let's, let's call them what they are, okay? It's the watch snobs, we're dealing with the watch snobs. And in a moment, I'll go through 10 things that I think really exemplify um, why they're so wrong because essentially they are wrong and I think you really hit the nail on the head because if you compare videos before and people always ask why were you so kind of gloomy and, and, and serious in my earlier videos and it's because I wasn't happy. Strangely my battle with health has really made me appreciate life, it's made me appreciate simply being able to breathe when you're not dependent on machines and I found out new things about myself, um, strengths I didn't even know, um, I've learnt fortitude, I've learnt resilience, I, YouTube has taught me to have a very thick skin uh, which is just excellent life skills. You've also got to ignore these people because you've got to remember these people are essentially watch snobs and people that like to go online and talk badly about people they've never ever met or talk badly about your Instagram, whatever it is. You've got to understand these people are toxic. They're unhappy themselves. I believe it or not, I, I kind of was more in that negative um, frame of mind before my own battle with health. When you appreciate true adversity, that is when you also start to appreciate life and what it really means. Um, so yeah, it's, it's funny, it's all kind of related and I am happy, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and nowadays it's very easy for me to deal with um, criticism or, or, or disrespect or anything like that because uh, I know my self-worth. I am in a great place now. Keep your perspective. That is very integral, I think. Don't waste your time with, with these people because they're just gonna drag you down. But anyway, let's look at 10 misconceptions of the watch snobs and you will see that they have no leg to stand on. Good golly. If the plebs could afford it, I don't want it. Affordable watches are all bad quality. Well, obviously, more affordable watches are gonna have corners cut. Uh, they're not gonna have as much QC as more expensive watches, but just to dismiss a watch because it's affordable as bad quality is an absolute fallacy. It's so wrong. The closer you get to $1,000, you really start to notice a, a significant improvement in the finishing, in um, the choice of movements included, in the, the refinement and, and time that's gone into it. I mean, look at Stover, for example, impeccable quality from around $1,000 upwards. Oh, let them eat cake. 
Okay, number nine, affordable watches are only for those that are not well off. I, <laughs> absolute rubbish. Some of the most wealthy, classy, uh, sophisticated, educated people I know wear, you know, swatches. How much you earn and what you do in life should have no relation to your watch. You should enjoy a watch, doesn't matter if it's, you know, $10, $20 or $100,000. This kind of thinking is a very, uh, typically you see it in kind of petty bourgeois social climbing, you know, it's, a, it's, it's for the insecure. If you think that wealth dictates who you are and your worth in this world, then, oh my God, you, you, you need to work on yourself. You really do. You're wearing sweatpants. It's Monday. So? So that's against the rules and you can't sit with us. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, darling. Okay, number eight. And this is when the watch snobs exclude people who don't have luxury watches. You do not have to own a Patek to enjoy horology and watches and this passion and learning. This is elitism. And to presume that somebody's not an expert because they're wearing a Casio or whatever, that is so judgmental and superficial. Everybody has to start somewhere. I mean, look, a couple of years ago, I was, I was well, I've always loved watches, but I didn't really get serious into it until a couple of years ago. And I've, I've shared this journey with you guys. And it's been one of the most pleasurable, wonderful, chapters of my life. I find watches of all levels interesting and so should you. There's always something to learn from watches of all levels. And besides, how are we going to grow this passion if we start excluding the entry level? It's counterintuitive. We, we, we have to embrace everybody. Now that's what I call old money. Splendid. Okay, number seven, affordable watches do not have historical significance. Well, this is, uh, oh my God, where do I? Look at the little Benrus I bought for $200, a mil spec, worn in Vietnam, 1970, incredible history. Um, look at the below the Accutron, this, this pre-quartz innovative, uh, well, now it's a data technology, but it was fascinating. The technology was used in, in satellites, worn by the, the spy pilots in the Cold War. Look at the Seiko 5 again. Um, a lot of them have the 7S26, which has the magic lever system, this in incredibly uh, ingenious but simple, deceptively simple way of, of allowing the rotor to wind the watch bi-directionally. These are just a few examples. Just because a watch is not expensive does not mean that it has any less history or significance to this wonderful passion. Hmm, I only wear haute couture. Number six, and I see this all the time, people refer to them as their first real watch, as if something affordable is not real. Well, this is just the most ignorant way of looking at something. And I think they're victims of the luxury watch myth uh, themselves, which I have discussed before. Robert Greene uh, famously said that essentially people want two things, wealth and a feeling of importance. That gives you an indication that they obviously want the latter, that they are insecure, that they need to have that luxury branding to lift themselves up. If we all think like that, we're gonna miss out on so much fun. There's so much fun to be had at all levels. Uh, you cannot put a price on enjoyment. If you're buying for status, I, I think you're not really buying for the true love of the craft and the, the history and the passion and you know the community and all the rest of it. This is a real watch. Just because it doesn't cost a fortune and it's not luxury or a certain brand or precious material or has not been hand decorated uh, in, in some in the Beauvais castle if you remember my video of that credible place doesn't mean it's not a watch okay moi judgmental when this peasant is wearing stone island okay number five is judging a person because of their watch and the, the misconceptions that come with that. I'll give you a little bit of context. There's an organization, I'm not gonna mention their name, but they have, uh, I think it's international, might be, might be domestic, I can't remember if it is international, but they have gatherings of watch enthusiasts. And I was, I, I was inquisitive to, to see what the requirements are. And, and I said, is there any brand you can't wear at these gatherings? And they said, Invicta, and I was so disappointed because surely it's about learning, it's about sharing the, the passion. 
does it matter what is on your wrist? Not at all. I think it's a slippery slope. What's next? You can say, oh, well, you're a certain way or you're from a certain place, you can't attend. And I think it speaks volumes about the ignorance and, and the, the, and this is, this is again, this is, goes into the, the industry and this kind of snobbery that they permeate outwards as part of their marketing. Never judge a person by their watch. I happened to meet in the street, I saw a guy wearing a marathon watch. It's a very particular watch. The chances are that they're going to be a watch enthusiast or they were issued it in the military. Either way, it's going to be an interesting conversation. I complimented his watch and we got to talking and he, you know, he was a watch guy. And that was fantastic. Had I have thought, oh, he's, he's just wearing a marathon or, you know, um, had I have completely disregarded his choice, we wouldn't have had that great conversation and connection. Who, who knows who you're going to meet or, you know, uh, you could be your next best friend. You never know. Guys, be open-minded, embrace each other. We share the same passion. Hmm, look at all that money, 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 money. Spend your pennies wisely, plebs. Okay, number four, affordable watches depreciate in value more than uh, more expensive ones. Okay, yes, certain brands, Patek, Rolex, blah, 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 you know, they do have that blue chip investment potential. Okay, I'm not denying that, but to, to just to exclude the watch, uh, because it's affordable. Look at some collectible Swatch watches, for example. There's countless Seikos that have, you know, gone through the roof, especially when they become discontinued or rare. There are transitional models that are important because they were the first to have a certain feature or an innovation or something like that. If I was to sell that Benrus, for example, I know I'm going to get my money back. I know I'm probably going to even make a profit, but I didn't buy it for that. I bought it for enjoyment and to own a little bit of history. But it works for luxury brands too. Too. Look at uh, Gerard Perigo, a highly innovative horticology brand. They're still innovating. It was 2008. They had the constant escapement. Highly underrated brand, but they devalue like crazy. So you know, just because it's a, a luxury brand doesn't mean that it's it's infallible. Oh my God, Rolex, ghastly. How common. Okay, number three talking trash about watches you've never held in the flesh. It's the only thing worse than recommending watches you've never held in the flesh or experienced. I know that it seems a big, big thing on, on YouTube. It's easy just to dismiss something because of its price or because it may look cheap, right? Uh, to look at the, uh, the Metal G-Shock I just reviewed. I put that off for ages because I, you know, for me, G-Shock means something else. But of course, when I got it, my whole experience, my whole feelings changed. So never ever judge a watch until you've seen it in the flesh. You can say, oh, stylistically, it's not my cup of tea, or oh, it looks a little bit um, flimsy, or it looks like this, or looks like that. But you can never definitively judge a watch until you've experienced it and talking trash about it. It just shows a level of ignorance, a, a, a kind of uncouth madness. Quartz? Good God. You won't find quartz in a Tompion clock. Okay, number two, quartz watches are not real watches. I see watch snobs say this all the time, just dismiss quartz watches. There are luxury brands. Look at FP Jean, look at uh, the Rolex Oyster Quartz. I, I used to own one, incredibly refined watches. All the extremes of quartz technology, that Grand Seiko with the 9F caliber have taken it to a whole new level. Or when they're utilized as real tool watches like the Breitling Emergency or the Chrono Space I had, to disregard the technology just because you don't like it. It is part of horology. To deny it is, is lunacy. People are getting confused with personal taste and preference. If you like, prefer mechanical watches, that's absolutely fine. But, and we have to understand there are various levels in quartz watches, are truly something to behold and, and have just as much innovation and refinement and research and development and manufacturing gone into them. Recording a world-changing event involving horology. It's horologium in Latin, darling. Okay, number one, and I see this all the time, is when people use the horology word, right? Horology, let's, let's get this clear, okay? And I see countless Instagrams that, that oh, I'm a horology fan. I say, oh, you're not into horology because you, you only like affordable watches. No, horology is the study of time, the keeping of hours, everything from a stick 
2,000 years ago, standing in the sands of ancient Egypt, casting a shadow. That is a time-telling device. That is part of horology. Horology is a huge story that runs parallel to the history of civilization, okay? If you are truly into horology, then you will know about Christian uh, Hygens and uh, the Thomas Tompions of this world, Marge and, and Harrison and all this. Using this word doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. That's marketing. I guarantee you, ask one of these watch snobs what an astrolabe does, they won't know. The wonderful thing about the story of horology is it gives context that makes us appreciate even the most rudimentary or affordable watches because it's part of that legacy, it's part of that story. Enjoy it, don't limit yourself. Anyway guys, I've been rabbiting on far too long. It's not gonna be gentry in a jiffy this time, but let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think watch snobs get wrong most of the time, uh, your pet peeves when dealing with the snobs in our community. Guys, we all love this thing. Enjoy it, be kind to each other. Let's grow it. Let's be the best that we can be. Spread that gentry positive spirit. Let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Money, 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 more money, all my money. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group, and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.